Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the Rodian Schwartz RTM 3000. In this presentation, we'll explain the basic settings used when making measurements with the Rodian Schwartz RTM 3000 series oscilloscope. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of oscilloscopes and how to operate them. If you don't have any experience with oscilloscopes, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Basic Oscilloscope Operation, before beginning this presentation. Before we begin configuring our scope and making measurements, there are two very important front panel keys that you need to be familiar with, Preset and Auto Set. Preset is used to return the scope to its default settings. This is very helpful if you're unsure about what the current settings are. Although Preset resets almost all the settings, it doesn't erase any data you've stored on the instrument. Auto Set, on the other hand, causes the scope to attempt to configure the vertical, horizontal, trigger, and display systems automatically based on the current input signal. Although settings chosen by AutoSet may not always be exactly what you need, they are very helpful in getting a waveform on the screen, and is a starting point for additional adjustment. Unlike Preset, AutoSet leaves most other settings unchanged. One last note, be careful not to press Preset when you really want AutoSet. The vertical system controls consist of the position knob and volts per division or vertical scale knob. The position knob can be used to move the waveform up and down, and pushing the knob recenters the waveform. Volts per division is used to scale the waveform vertically. The current value of volts per division is shown at the bottom and can, of course, also be read directly off the vertical axis. Recall that in most cases, we want to adjust volts per division such that our waveform almost fills the screen, since this maximizes the use of the bits in the scope's analog to digital converter. Having volts per division set too high not only means that we're not using all of the ADC, it also makes it much harder to visualize a waveform or accurately measure it. Just like the vertical system, the horizontal system has a position control knob that can be adjusted to move the waveform right or left on the screen. The horizontal scaling is controlled by the seconds per division or horizontal scale knob. The current value of seconds per division is shown near the top of the screen and can also be read off the horizontal axis. Unlike the vertical system where the correct setting for volts per division is the one that maximizes the waveform vertically, the choice of seconds per division depends on the application. We can choose larger values of seconds per division to see more cycles of a periodic waveform and smaller values to see fewer cycles, or even just a portion of one cycle. Next, let's talk about triggering. Recall that there are many different types of triggering. In this presentation, we're going to be using the most basic, but also the most common form of triggering, namely edge triggering. For edge triggering, we define a trigger level using the trigger level knob. Current trigger level is indicated by a TL flag on the right edge of the screen, and is also shown numerically at the top of the screen. The trigger point, that is, where the trigger occurred in the displayed waveform, is marked as well. Note that an edge trigger can be defined either as a rising slope or as a falling slope. It's very important to set the correct trigger level when working with either periodic or single shot waveforms. The good news is that for many periodic waveforms, we don't have to be terribly precise in setting our trigger level. In this example, if we set our trigger level anywhere between plus 360 and minus 360 millivolts, we still get a proper trigger on this periodic waveform. However, if we increase the trigger level too high, we fail to get a stationary or stable waveform on the screen. Now let's look at the display system. Consider the square or pulsed waveform. If we wanted to know things like peak voltage, pulse width, or pulse repetition interval, we could, of course, look at volts per division, here 50 millivolts per division, and seconds per division, here 20 milliseconds per division, and then start counting divisions and doing the math. Even with conveniently round numbers like the ones we have here, this is a time-consuming and error-prone process. Using cursors is a significant improvement compared to counting divisions. By using two sets of cursors, vertical and horizontal, we can get results much more quickly and more precisely. We enable cursors using the cursor button and adjust them using the cursor knob, pushing the button in to toggle between cursors. 
A further enhancement is the Quick Measure function, which enables several automatic measurements of the signal and displays those measurements directly on the screen. For example, rise time and fall time, positive and negative peaks, etc. On the RTM3000, there's also a measure menu, which enables an enormous range of automated measurement types in four different categories. Up to eight of these measurements can be selected and displayed at any one time. In many cases, this provides a substantial improvement over manual or marker-based measurement. Let's summarize what we've covered. Basic oscilloscope operation involves the configuration of four systems, the vertical system, the horizontal system, the trigger system, and the display system. A good starting point for many scope measurements is a preset and or an auto set, but be sure to remember the difference between them. Making good voltage versus time measurements is easier if you follow a few simple guidelines, such as setting volts per division to maximize the waveform on the screen, setting an appropriate trigger level to get a stable waveform, and using automated measurements whenever possible for both speed and accuracy. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the Rodian Schwartz RTM3000. If you'd like to learn more about oscilloscopes or common oscilloscope measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.